Today, I want to talk about memory. Memory is one of the most exciting things that we think is happening in the agent world, and we're adding a bunch of functionality into LangGraph to help you build applications that have memory. This video will be more of a conceptual overview. We won't go over any code. Rather, we're going to talk through a few memory concepts that we think are critical to understanding memory and understanding how we're thinking and tackling memory here at LangChain. One of the main things that we think about memory is that it needs to be really application specific. It needs to be specific to what you're trying to do and what things you might want to remember because that's what's going to make your application better. So we're not very bullish on the idea of a general memory abstraction or service. Rather, we're going to give you low level components so that you can implement memory for yourself. And we're also going to tell you how we're thinking about it so that hopefully that can help you implement the best memory for your application. At a high level, we think there are two types of memory. One is short-term memory, and this primarily relates to conversation memory. If you've used LangGraph before, then you're probably familiar with the idea of a checkpointer. Checkpointers maintain memory for a specific thread. A thread is equivalent to a conversation. And so this is what we call short-term memory, and checkpointers are the LangGraph implementation for implementing that. Long-term memory is a new concept that we've recently started to think about and talk about. And we've added a new abstraction called store to help with this in LangGraph. So in LangGraph, checkpointers keep the memory within a thread. Store is used to keep memory across threads. So it can be updated with information that it's gleaned from multiple different threads, and then can pull that in and can use that when processing a new thread. Let's talk about some short-term memory things first, and then we'll dive into more detail on long-term memory. One of the common techniques we see for short-term memory is just filtering messages. As you have more and more back and forth with an AI, the message list will grow in length. And so being able to filter them is really important. There's some basic filtering stuff, like just keep the last 10 messages. But then there's also things based on token counts and based on the types of messages as well. Perhaps it's more important to keep the human and AI messages rather than the tools, for example. If you're not satisfied with just filtering messages, you can also summarize previous messages and pass in a summary. This is typically done by calling an LLM and storing that as some attribute on your graph state. Now let's talk about long-term memory. At a high level, we see two different ways that people are putting long-term memory into their application. One is what we call in the hot path. And so this is where the application logic itself updates memory. The other is when it happens in the background. And so here you have the application running and there's a separate process that in the background runs and updates memory. And this can happen in real time or this can happen 30 minutes later, an hour later, whatever you decide. There's some pros and cons to each of these. So in the hot path, it's very transparent when you're updating memory. You can show this to the user so they know what's going on. It's also real time. So if they go start a separate conversation right away, they have that updated memory. The downsides are that because it's in the hot path, it can add some latency. And it also makes your application logic a little bit more convoluted because now you have to have your core application logic in there as well as the logic for how to update the memory. When it happens in the background, the pros and cons are flipped. So there's no latency that's added because it's happening in the background in a separate process. You can also cleanly separate the logic for your application versus the logic for updating memory. However, there are some cons. Because this is happening in the background, you can't easily surface that to the user. And separately, depending on how you set it up, this memory may not be updated when you go to start a new conversation. In fact, a key part of when you're running memory in the background is figuring out when exactly to trigger that background run. And that adds some additional logic that you have to think about. For long-term memory, it's really important to think about what's the exact shape of the memory that you're storing. And there's a few different options that we see people doing. One common type of memory is instructions. These are instructions that can be inserted as part of a system prompt. That system prompt then controls how the application performs. These instructions are often updated based on user interactions or user feedback. So for example, if you have a tweet writer application, 
and you go back and forth with the user and they refine their tweet and you see that they're removing emojis, you can use an LLM to synthesize those interactions and update the part of the system prompt to say don't use emojis. A second type of memory that we see people storing is what we call profile. Instructions are typically a string, but profiles are now a dictionary of key value pairs. So for a chatbot that's concerned with being a companion for a user, you might have things like name, age, friends that you want to remember about the user. The memory process here would extract that information based on user conversations and then update any previous information that had existed to create a new updated profile. This profile can then be inserted as part of the system message in future conversations, and this can be included when responding to the user. A step above this profile is a list of these objects. This is useful when you want to remember a list of things. For example, a list of my favorite restaurants, and you want to remember the location and the name and the type of all of them. There's some extra complexity here. The LLM now has to prompt to not only add a new item to the list, but also update or delete previous ones. And so there's a bit of prompt engineering you need to do here. Again, we're really excited about memory at LingChain. We think it's a key part of building personalized and differentiated applications. But we also think that there's no silver bullet, single answer fits all solution for memory. We think that it has to be custom to your application. And so we hope to give you a lot of the tools to help you build application specific memory yourself. So I know this just covered the concepts, but I'd encourage you to go check out the how-to guides and the tutorials that we have out for building this type of personalized memory. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.